Son of a bitch. Fallout 4. Welcome to the nuclear apocalypse, which not only brings with it tons of gross irradiated creatures, but also amazingly hilarious glitches. So let's kick things off from the very beginning of the game. On the run to the vault before the nuclear bomb destroys everything you know and love, you're accompanied by Nora and your infant son, Sean. Now, usually when you arrive at the vault entrance, bomb goes off, platform drops down. Just before this happens, however, you can actually affect Nora by getting in her way. If you get in front of her and she stops going anywhere, the game will take a second to figure it out and then put her back on a programmed path. If you disrupt her enough that she doesn't make it to the center of the vault platform, she'll just decide, you know, maybe surviving just isn't for me, and step off the platform completely. When the platform begins to drop after the bomb goes off, she'll just be left at the top. Yeah, I don't think she's gonna make it. Inside the vault, you can find the Cryolator, one of the best weapons in the game, but ah, uh, damn, I need to be a lockpicking master. Except that, really, all you need is dog meat. If you tell Dogmeat to go looking for items just outside the small room the Cryolator is in, he'll happily just go and get it for you. Now simply pick it up and it's yours. There is one small detail though. Dogmeat will have the ammo for the Cryolator, so in order to get it, you'll have to trade with him. And there's the cryo cells we need. With this glitch, you can have one of the best weapons in the game as soon as you've met Dogmeat, which is pretty much the beginning. And trust me, it's a lot of fun freezing things to death. Another cool glitch you can use at the beginning of the game and using dog meat is item duplication. Specifically, duplicating the Your Special booklet that you can find in the remains of your house. There's only one copy of the booklet in the game, and when you pick it up, it'll level up one of your chosen special stats. Now, if we could, I don't know, copy this booklet multiple times, we could max out all our special stats very early in the game. In order to duplicate an item, in this case the Your Special booklet, open up your Pip-Boy and go to the item you want to duplicate and then choose to drop the item. With the item on the floor in front of you, tell Dogmeat to go a small distance away, then you also need to move away from the item so that the option for Dogmeat to get the item appears on screen. Use the option for Dogmeat to get the item and then move toward it yourself so that the option to take the item then appears on screen. When Dogmeat stops to pick up the item, quickly take the item at the same time. If you're successful, Dogmeat will now be carrying an invisible item, a duplicate item of whatever you dropped, so now just pick them both up again. The timing of this is very important, but you'll know if you got it, as when you check the item within the Pip-Boy, there are now two copies of the booklet. Now just repeat these steps, and for every additional copy, you'll be prompted to level up a special stat. Do this around 30 times, and you'll have all your special stats at level 10 before you've even begun to explore the Commonwealth. This can take around half an hour to achieve, but it cuts out all the grinding for experience if you just want to get through the game quickly and enjoy all the perks early. And of course, this same process can be used to create duplicates of any item, so it's got plenty of uses. So now we're ready to explore the Commonwealth Wasteland, and one of the first big creature fights we come across is a Deathclaw, and boy is he a force to be reckoned with, especially this early in the game. Only sometimes he can get a little bit stuck in the ground he emerges from. Yeah, awkward. Now I think this has something to do with Deathclaw's spawn point or the fact that Bethesda make really buggy games. Shh, there, there. I love you, but it's true. See how Deathclaw kind of spawns and then disappears? Well, he's stuck in the little hole in the ground. So now he's free to attack with like the weakest weapon you've got. I mean, why waste bullets, right? Take that, you beast. Feel the wrath of my melee attack. Yeah, I killed one of the game's fiercest foes with a stick. Who knew, right? Making your way through the Commonwealth, you're gonna end up grabbing and carrying a lot of weapons and all kinds of junk, which will only slow you down. If you're with a buddy, you can always trade items with them so they carry some of the load, but eventually, even they will be carrying too much. Luckily, there's a glitch that can solve this problem. If your partner is carrying too much, but you need to offload a few things, simply select a few items within the Pip-Boy and then drop them. Now, just get your partner to pick them up and they'll happily oblige. When they grab the item you've dropped, it goes into their trade items regardless of how much they're already carrying. So now you have an infinite amount of space with which to carry items, so no more getting slowed down by heavy stuff anymore. The number of times I've used this glitch alone really tells you how much stuff you'll be grabbing along the way. It's worth noting that you won't be able to use this glitch with dog meat for some reason, so bear that in mind. 
not only will you be finding stuff randomly in the world, but you'll also be buying stuff too, provided you have enough caps. And this next glitch will make sure you have more than enough caps when buying items from a vendor. To set up the glitch, first select and buy all the rounds of one of the ammo types, preferably the ammo type you use the least. So, I've chosen the 308s and bought all 59 of them which are now in my inventory. Now switch to your inventory and sell back one of that ammo type. So I've sold back one of the 308s to the vendor. Lastly, sell back the rest of the remaining ammo of that type. So that's 58 of the 308s going back to the vendor. Now if you look closely, I still have one of that ammo type in my inventory, despite selling it all back to the vendor. With that one round glitched, I can now sell it back to the vendor repeatedly, and this will put his caps in the minus numbers. You can keep doing this until they have a minus number in the hundreds. But if you really want to get a lot of caps, switch to the vendor's side and start buying back whichever rounds you've been selling. You'll see that the amount of caps the vendor owes you is far outweighed by the value of whatever stock he has, meaning you can now just buy every single item he has and still have enough left over. The only item you won't be able to buy back is the ammo rounds you use for the glitch, which is why you should choose an ammo type you rarely use. If you really want that type of ammo back, you'll just have to buy it legit. With all his stock bought out, you now just have to accept the trade. You'll be told that the vendor doesn't have enough caps, but you should accept the trade anyway, and now you have all the items you want, and you haven't spent any of the caps you went in with, in fact, you've gained caps. Vendors restock every 24 hours, so now find somewhere to kill some time, like a chair or a bed, and then you're able to go back and do the glitch all over again. You're rich, rich beyond your wildest dreams. Okay, so that's some of the useful glitches, let's go see what strange and messed up things you might encounter during the game. Here's a glitch that lets you jump infinitely into the air using these engines that are found randomly all over the commonwealth. After you cross the bridge from Sanctuary Hills, take a look to the left and down by the river is one of these engines. You can pick them up by holding the action button and then drag them around. If you jump on top of them in first person view and then pick them up while standing on them, something cool will happen when you jump. Every time you jump, you'll gain some height, as for some reason the game fails to check the gravity applied to these engines believing you to be grounded. This means the more you jump, the higher you go. You can do this seemingly forever to get some amazing views, just make sure you don't move around too much as you can fall off the engine, and if you do, you won't stick the landing. Although, it is possible to crouch and move around if you're kind of in a sweet spot on the engine. It seems these engines are the only item this really works on, although I'm sure there may be others. Here's a funny glitch you can do whilst in water. Sometimes you'll be able to run around underwater, which is a glitch in itself, but the fun happens when you try to jump. You'll get locked in this position and you'll be able to float around on land. It seems the game gets a bit confused. You're underwater but running, and you're not able to jump underwater, so what? You must be falling for a really long time then. I'll just keep you in this state until you hit the ground. But of course, you never hit the ground as you're already grounded, so you're frozen in this state. That doesn't stop it looking amazing though. I am a god! Watch me slide! Try aiming a weapon and the pose changes, but I'm still sliding! Whee! The one spot on the map you can get this to work is here, but basically anywhere where the game gets confused if you're actually in water or not will work. If you're running around underwater, all you have to do is jump. And you can also run while you're in this state too, it's out of control. Fallout 4, you are truly the gift that keeps on giving. But honestly, there's even more glitchy stuff than this within the game, some of it also to do with water. You'll be running around, doing your thing, and suddenly an NPC will just be swimming on land like it's the most normal thing in the world. Even dog meets at it, just doggy paddling along. What is this? This makes no sense. This seemingly happens randomly. Honestly, I wish I knew how to trigger it. Nobody would be running anymore. Speaking of water, I lost count of how many times I saw this splashing glitch. Whenever something is at the edge of some water, the splashing animation triggers infinitely. Honestly, it just looks like the projectile vomiting milk. It's not pleasant. Everything just seems to float in this game. Like in this area of the map, you can find these guys just stuck in the air. You just find them like this. That's their default thing, floating. I found a plank of wood just suspended in the air for no reason. 
This skeleton was floating. I killed a feral ghoul and its dead hand was floating. Ew, Piper, don't touch it. And this ghoul's entire body was floating. Well, what was left of it. Dance for me, baby, dance. I was going along, minding my own business, then this thing explodes, gives me my own floating one-armed dead guy. Whatever he does, he's doing it. You got floating monster bears, cause, you know, why not? Even this cat was floating in the air. Donk. Okay, this is getting silly now. Some of the objects in this game seem to have a mind of their own, like I saw two of these wooden planks in the game do this. What does it mean? Oh, and not just wooden planks, also a spatula. Fallout 4, 10 out of 10, game of the year. Frozen crow anyone? No? Just me? Alright. You ever just been going along and you just, oh, oh. That was like that when I got here, I swear, I just tapped it, it rolled over. I don't even know what's going on here. There's a man and a car, the man stuck under the car, the car won't stop flipping, this is just, it's, it's too much. Then you got Barrel Man, a glitched corpse in a barrel that just keeps moving. The physics engine is going crazy somewhere in all this and provides probably one of my favourite glitches in the game. Where will it stop? Nobody knows. The NPCs in Fallout 4 provide a lot of the glitchiness you'll see randomly in the game. Like, sometimes dog meat will go for a short flight into the air whilst attacking mole rats. This happens when dog meat's attack locks onto a mole rat shooting out of the ground. The game seemingly forgets gravity for a second. Piper's good for a glitch or two. When you first meet her, depending on where you're standing during the cutscene, you can get this. Whoa, Piper, you're too close. I usually wait until the second date to see inside a girl's face. I looked away for two seconds and Piper was doing this. Uh, uh. Oh, you got it? You good? Okay. And sometimes Piper just loses it completely. I don't know how this happened, but Piper is stuck sideways in the ground. Yeah. It's not only Piper that brings the crazy glitches. I caught Nick Valentine sitting in an invisible chair. Real casual-like. Oh, and then he decided to hack a terminal. With his feet inside the ground. Does that make it easier to do what you're doing? Well, that's just marvelous. I think my new favourite thing to do with the buddy characters is to position them inside the elevator doors and then activate them. Ah, every time. When the Minutemen were first heading to Sanctuary Hills, they got kinda lost, or fell off the bridge, whichever came first, and then the confusion set in. They just couldn't figure out where they went wrong, it was actually pretty funny watching them pace up and down. Have you ever seen a more confused bunch of NPCs ever? In a settlement, if you ever get attacked by super mutants, raiders or the sort, sometimes NPCs can jump inside your power armor and the results are hilarious. They become disfigured to match the power armor they're in so they end up with long arms and legs because the body has moved upwards. Also, when they try to move forwards, it's just perfect. I love this. I managed to catch the vault tech rep welding nothing at all. Then his welding mask would snap from his head to his wrist. This is either the greatest mime act ever, or I just don't know what's going on. I was even more confused with this woman in Diamond City. There we were, having a nice conversation, then poof, she was gone. It turns out she just does that. I've had enemies do weird stuff too, like this guy who was holding an invisible gun. How much damage do you really think you're gonna do with that? Funny thing is, he didn't seem to notice me at all. Ah oh well, snooze you lose. This super mutant cracked me up. He would lose his left arm at random and then just stay stood on the spot while I took shots at him. Then he decided he did have an arm and was more than prepared to kill me with it. I found these two stuck in the ground with their legs sticking out. Naturally, my first instinct was to shoot at them and boy am I glad I did. It's like the ground just spat them out, or they're rising from the grave, whichever you prefer. Don't you just love it when you come home to find a Brahmin stuck in your house? Oh, how we laughed. <laughs> Seriously, get out of my house. Aw, oh, he wants me to scratch his tummy. Good dead mongrel, I love you too. I had more than a few occasions where I would die and then respawn stuck on the spot in a T-pose. I couldn't move at all and the only fix was to switch from first person and back again. It also happened where I could see completely inside my character but I was able to move around. This game is just too weird sometimes. No glitchy game is complete without an out of bounds glitch. If you head to this part of the map, there is a wall you can literally just run through. Then the game has a meltdown and loads and unloads sections of the world depending on where you are. The walls have two-sided collision detection, so even though there's a raider's hideout next to this area, you won't be able to shoot at anyone from inside these walls. But it's always cool to see the game broken down like this. This next out of bounds I'm pleased to say was something I discovered by messing around. 
Go to this spot on the map and then find these trees. If you get in just the right spot and keep jumping, you'll see that you sink into the ground a tiny bit before being pushed back upwards. If you get the sweet spot, you can simply mash the jump button and you'll slowly fall through the floor and out of bounds. You'll fall into the water below and now you'll be able to swim around under the map. You can even swim to the edge of the water, but you'll fall off and drop for a few seconds and then the game will place you back on solid ground. It's not useful in any way, but I love these types of glitches the most. Honestly, there are tons of glitches in Fallout 4, and to cover all of them would take all day. But there you have it, a ton of random, useful, and hilarious glitches from Fallout 4 that you guys can try out. And if you like this episode, hit that like button, share it with everyone you know and love, but most importantly, please subscribe if you want to see more from the series. Head over to the Facebook page for the show, I post updates and sneak peeks to upcoming episodes and keep you guys in the know about all things Son of a Glitch. Or you can follow me on Twitter and keep updated that way. Go on, try it, you know, if you want to.